On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Kent doesn't know how much stuff should cost. Amos knows what photos are worth. Um, Agret Suko, worth it or no? I once thought I was going to be a 40-year-old virgin, but I'm not. I mean, that really depends on what you consider virgin, but I get your point. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 183 for the 2nd of August, 2018. This is your two lifelong get, uh, friends and their guests celebrate all, uh, all things, uh, dude, Guess? stuff. Yeah, things. <laughs> stuff and things. Hey man, how you doing? Oh uh, man, uh, good. It's been a busy week. I barely remember anything about it. Yes, yes, I can agree yeah. with that. Uh, I barely remember anything about your week as well. Um... This is this is this is this is actually fairly entertaining. I'm having camera lag on my system. Ooh, that's well, that's interesting. It's probably the glasses. It, it, yeah, maybe I was going to comment on that. Um, yeah. You have uh, two more eyes than you normally do. Uh, it, well, it, I've had them for a while. It's just I don't usually wear them, but today I've got a little bit of a headache. So instead of straining my eyes to look at stuff, I figured I'd go ahead and pop these on and uh, call it a day. Yeah, I also have that's, one fewer light than I normally have. I usually have two lights on in here, and I was, that, that's, again with the headache thing. So I figured, mm. why, why press it? That's, you know, I mean, you got to work that lighting. Uh, man, <laughs> so, speaking of light, I, man, I've got I've got some lamps for sale. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you probably don't want those. Uh, uh, man, I, I'm gonna have a garage sale. I, yeah. uh, over the, a 20 year military career, you tend to collect some shit. Yeah. Yeah, you because do. because you pack shit up to move, mm-hmm. you get to the new destination. You don't have your shit yet, so you buy more shit because you need it right now, not in three weeks when your shit arrives. Right. But you never get rid of the, like one set or the other. You just keep them and pack them and move with them again and just start the cycle over again and then do it again and again and again. And next thing you know, you just got a garage full of boxes of shit that you don't need. And right. here we are. And yes. I'm finally doing something about it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's... It's good for you. It's uh, finally getting rid of some crap, especially when you're a pack rat like uh, like you and I, because we're we're both pack right. rats. We both like, hate to throw shit away. Yeah, like I mean, how many how many PS2 cables do you need, and how many like uh, serial cables does one need in 2018? I mean, at, at least one more, right? Um, I'm thinking like 12 less. Of each. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, oh man, but, but what are those things where, I mean, okay. So a serial cable is probably worth zero, nothing, but like what's, um, a brand new set of, uh, steel toe boots worth. What's a lamp worth. What is, a uh, a worn once, uh, winter jacket worth. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Is it $2? Is it $20? Is it $250? I don't know. Like, I, uh, Dude, it's been at least a decade since I've been to a garage sale. I don't know the going rates of things. So are, are you going to start going on garage sales, or are you just going to like throw shit in the yard and hope people pick it up and leave money behind? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am going to have to get up early to do this thing, so that causes a problem. <laughs> I don't, I'm not an early guy on the weekends. Uh, I'm um, not an early but, guy during the week. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, no, it, so garage sale is something we've been talking about for a while because mm-hmm. we've kind of been going on a purge, but we've just been collecting things in the garage to the point where we can no longer park a car in the garage. And uh, over the last week or so, we were like, hmm, I don't know. When do you want to do this thing? Like two weeks from now? I don't know. Three weeks from now? I don't know. Before the summer ends, kind of back and forth like that. And then... The next day after we had that conversation, one of our neighbors walks by and hands us a little flyer and says, hey, uh, next Saturday, we are having a block-wide garage sale, and uh, we'd love it if you guys participated. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> we're going to do that, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> we don't have to advertise or anything. We're just going to open the garage, and hopefully people will walk in and take our shit and leave money behind. <laughs> <laughs> That that is the best way possible for that to go. That uh, that's that's optimal. Um, what kind of stuff are we talking about? I mean, uh, of course you got some old stuff. I mean, I I I still have like old steel toe boots because I use them for 
like the ones that I can't wear in my uniform anymore because they're they're outdated or whatever. I have mm-hmm. those for yard boots because they make amazing yard boots. Yes, and I have two pairs of those that oh. are my yard boots. Well, there you and, go. And uh, I've still got like five, I think, oh sets of boots, like two of them that have never been worn. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, uh, um, man. Because you know, you know how it is when you deploy. Every time yeah. you deploy, they feel like they need to buy the entire squadron a brand new set of everything. And I'm like, no, I'm just gonna deploy with my old ones. They're still good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, in, in like old uniforms and stuff like that, those make really good uh, fishing clothes and everything else. So I'm I'm not like throwing away any of that stuff, but I still have. I'd say the majority of the clutter that I have is uniform items that I, I'm just too fucking fat to wear anymore so right. uh i can't do anything with those because it's not like i can wear them you know around the garage or anything i just gotta probably donate them or whatever but then they're gonna be outdated here in a few years anyway because we're getting a new uniform those cps so, yeah exactly nobody's I'm, gonna want that shit because that that uniform becomes active like one quick october. like real soon right yeah one october and nobody's gonna want the old shit hmm. well some people there's gonna be some holdouts because i remember i was in korea when the abu came out mm-hmm. Of course, we had like a year or two years or whatever to conform, but we could start wearing it, you know, that October. I got that shit day one. Like as soon as it was in clothing sales, right. I bought that shit. Because BDUs were you know, stupid. Yeah, BDUs are ugly as fuck, for one. Two, you don't have to iron the ABU. The boots that go with the ABU, you don't have to polish. Mm-hmm. It's literally a wash and wear uniform. You just throw it on. And that meant yep. the world to me. And to me, it was the most beautiful uniform I've ever worn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually got mine because they were doing the test bed at uh, Elmendorf for the uniform oh, and stuff right. like that. Um, mm-hmm. I got mine because I was at Hickam, but I was deploying. And I was deploying just mm-hmm. after the cutoff date. So they just gave me all new stuff. And I was like, well, I guess I'll start wearing this now. Uh, Mm Because y'all just gave it to me, and you're not taking it back because my deployment got canceled, so I'm just going to wear all this shit. They were like, have you put your stripes on yet? And I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. And my name tape. Yeah, everything everything is fully customized. If you give give it to somebody else now, then uh, it's going to be awkward for them. So I just keep it. And uh, I just started wearing it the next week because hell with it. Yeah. Now the OCP, yeah. I might actually get the, get one OCP because I just wear one uniform now. I just wash it and it's all faded. It looks like Arctic BDUs and shit. Um, yeah, right. So I might just get an OCP just to just to have that as like my last uniform, so I can complete the collection of uniforms. You know. Yeah. We so came in. We came in right as the, BDUs were really, really hitting big because they they were mandatory like one October ninety four, and we came in in ninety five. Yeah. So we just barely missed the fatigues. Yep. Yep. So what you're saying is you're down with OCP? Yeah, yeah, I think I am. Ah, oh, damn it. You messed that up. You're supposed to say, yeah, you know me. No. But, you know, whatever. Not going to do that. Um, I'm not going to give I you the satisfaction. All, I miss either. everything that you tossed to me, too. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Agretsuko, man. You uh, you fi- finally watched all of Agretsuko. Or Agretsuko. Um, Agretsuko, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one of those things. Like, you, you read things the way that it's written, not how it's pronounced. Right. Oh man, no, dude! What a wonderful show! <laughs> like that. So, so for th- those that haven't been paying attention in the last couple episodes where we've talked about Agretzko, this is a an anime show that's on Netflix. It's about this. Uh, what is she? A red panda, right? She kind of looks like a cat, but she's a red panda, I think. Anyway, sure. it, they're, she's all, in a they're all of, they're all distorted animals. Yeah, they're all like anthropomorphic animals working yeah. in an office mm-hmm. setting, and um. A Gret- or well, her name's actually Retzko. Retzko hates her job, but mm. she is a very uh, conformist type of personality where she just kind of like, oh, I hate this, but I'm just going to smile through it and just do the thing I'm supposed to do. So all of that aggression builds up. Aggression, which is why, why they call the show Agretzo. Agretzko. Anyway, so to, to diffuse from all of that and uh, let off some steam... She sings death metal karaoke, mm. and I love it so much. Retzko, I think, is my spirit animal, <laughs> and I love her forever and ever, and I want them desperately to make a season two because it is so good. They are. It's already been bought. Netflix has already <gasps> bought. It's coming oh. out next year. Oh, I'm so happy now. Yeah. That it, has made it, my week. It might be late 2019 or early 2020. I don't remember, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's in... 
Like it's it's purchased, it's paid for. Yeah. W- one thing that I caught, I think it was in like uh, episode eight or something like that. It's a ten episode series, and they're only like what eighteen minutes long or something. Yeah, they're really short. Yeah, fifteen to eighteen minutes. I th- yeah, the final episode was eighteen minutes, so the rest of them are like fifteen. Uh, anyway, so Sanrio is the company, the Japanese company that that makes a Gretzko. Sanrio is also the company that that you might be familiar with, Hello Kitty. Mm-hmm. So it, they're very well known for that like kawaii style, like you know, really cute stuff, like cutesy cutesy stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And Retzko very much fits that Sanrio mold of cutesy. Like the most of the other animals are either like ugly on purpose or just kind of like plainly drawn. Right. But she's that super cute. The big, um, the big bad boss reminds like, me of uh, of of the cartoon renditions of Ganon back in the Nintendo Power days. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he's a he's like a really big fat pig that's just angry. Like his eyes don't open all the way, and when they do, they're like glowing red because he's angry. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So in like episode eight, I think it was somebody told Retzko, like one of the other characters said that, um, you know, um, you really remind me of those Sanrio animals. Yeah, uh, really you know, kind of cute. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. And I laughed my balls off. I watched it with the family, and I don't think any of them caught it except yeah. for me. But I was just like, ah! Did, did you uh, did you watch it with and with, with the uh, subtitles on to see both stories going on? No. So the, the, they do show subtitles for anything written on the screen, like the right. signs and everything are in are in kanji. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I read those, of course. But no, I have not gone back through to watch the fully subbed version I, I, yeah. i'm gonna have to do that because i mean it's the same story but it they express it much differently yeah sometimes it's, it's less aggressive yeah sometimes story. it's way more aggressive it's just <laughs> you know sometimes it's just a change it's a different way of saying the same thing but it's oh it's it's interesting that, that it's so different right right so so uh man i heard i heard you've been up to some photography um what, yeah. what, what you going on what you got going on with that we had another uh photography collaboration here in wasilla um, mm-hmm. so went out there with Amber and took some pictures on the, on, it, it's not the beach, it's the, the riverbank, but it's this big camp area, um, on the, uh, shoots, which, which river is it? Uh, I don't remember. The Alaskan river. No, no, it's definitely not the Alaskan river. That's like 600 miles away. The frozen river. Uh, no, it's not frozen yet. It will be, but it's not right now. The soon to be frozen river. <laughs> you're, you're not helping at all. <laughs> <laughs> The river, the the fifty or no, the forty ninth state river. It, it's it's the Knick River. <laughs> the, <laughs> I'm not even making that up. That's what it is. It's the Knick the River. The Knick. Yeah, okay. Knick. K N I K. Knick. Got it. So it's like a, a Knickerbocker is like the full name. No, of it? no, just the Knick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In, in fact, one of the main roads here in Wasilla that heads south is uh, we we call it KGB, but it's Knick Goose Bay Road. We just call it KGB because you got you, you're, you're not going to survive. Road is dangerous. KGB, as hell. that's great. Yeah. I mean, especially considering you We're can right see next, Russia from yeah, the Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, we went out there and we we took some pictures. It was it was pretty interesting. Some different models, different photographers this time. Uh, totally different group, really, and a lot of fun. I didn't get a whole lot of great pictures. I might might have gotten five or so that are that are keepable i guess um, a lot of them mm-hmm. were just crap because i was really trying out a lot of different lighting situations at one point the sun was going down on one side and then there's cloud cover and an open sky on the other side so you almost have like two different light sources and there's two temperature two different temperatures of light so you could have somebody face one way and it would and their face would glow with the yellow light and turn around the other way and their shirt would glow with blue light and it was really really interesting kind of difficult to shoot and get really good shots out of it, but it was fun anyway so yeah, that was, that was cool. That sounds great. When am I going to be able to see those on your on your Instagram? Um, I mean, I'm I'm really good at. at uh, no, I'm not. I suck <laughs> at sharing pictures in any way, shape, or form. I I finally shared the the ones that I took in the last collab on my Facebook. I never even got them to Instagram. Um, yeah, those were great, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, excellent use of lighting for those. That was all natural light too. That was, that was, uh, mm-hmm. Those those all just soft light pouring through the windows, and these were all, of course, natural light. Well, there's a couple of them that I used a little fill flash, but I didn't didn't bring my remote, so the flash was 
mounted on, on the hot shoe on top of the camera, and that just basically right. flattens everything. I'm getting really in the weeds of photography here, but that flattens the image <laughs> to where it, it lights your subject, but it takes away all the texture. And mm. if you don't have texture, you can't really play with light because everything just looks like like a plate, and it's not as mm. fun. So, um, Although we did, uh, th- this weekend went down and took the trailer down to base because uh, we have a big inspection on base, so my wife and I have been kind of staying on base about half, the t- half this week. And took it down there. And I got to tell you, man, it's really convenient. If, if I could just park the trailer down near the base somewhere, because it's really cool to just have somewhere to go. It's nice and quiet. You get a good night's sleep, roll out of bed, and you're practically at work already. It's mm. great because I don't have to stay there. Like, that's not my final destination. I can come home and get away from base, get away from all the base people. We'll call them that. And out of that base environment and just be able to chill out at home. Uh, and have this like mm-hmm. this waypoint in the middle. It's it's really awesome. Um, but it was good to take the trailer out and uh, the, you know have uh, uh, this, we have two slides in our trailer that expand out to expand the living room and the back bedroom. And I didn't even know if those still worked because we haven't used them in two years. So to you know to to set those yeah. out and actually have the trailer set up and it's it's you know we're going to clean it out a little bit and we might actually be able to use it to go camping soon. I mean the winter's coming, but we still got a couple well, couple well, good weekends left. Glamping. Uh, hey, you call it what you want. Um, any anytime I have to package in any way, shape, or form, or handle my own poop, it's not <laughs> glamping. I'm just saying, because that's got to go somewhere, and and there's a valve that someone has to touch to release to let that stuff go. And if that's the case, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not one to to enjoy packaging my poop. <laughs> Uh, man, did you watch any movies this week? I did, but I don't remember what it was, so it must not have been very good. Man, I uh, I rewatched Forty Year Old Virgin. Is that because your movie pass wasn't working? Uh, t- dude, there haven't been any movies in the theater that I want to go see uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So, um, <sighs> dude, how, how, how was watch rewatching Forty Year Old Virgin? Does it hold really up? Really good. Yeah. It held up perfectly. Yeah. Good. Like it was fantastic. Uh, like I like I hinted at in the um, in the uh, lead up to the show, there was a time in my life, like in high school, that I thought I was going to be a forty year old virgin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so but, did I. Yeah. I thought you were going to be a forty year old virgin too. <laughs> yeah. Like, it kind of surprised me when you weren't anymore. Like those uh, those those news. Yeah, so I um I, I reached forty last mm-hmm. year, mm-hmm. and um turns out I um I did not become a forty year old virgin. Mm. Uh, it turns out that you know once you're forty years old, you, you can't get your virginity back. Um, I mean, you could really get meta and and go along the discussion if there's really a, such a thing as virginity in the first place. I mean, that's a that's more of a Lacey <laughs> Green kind of topic, but I mean, that's you know that's that's right. there, that's on the table. Yeah, um, yeah, my hymen busted a long time ago, so probably on a bike because that's how most of them break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh Jesus, <laughs> um, man! Speaking of movies, though, and uh, not having anything that I want to go watch with my movie pass, mm. um, how, how how are we doing in the draft? Let's find out. Welcome to your BT Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of July 30th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Boy Shay. East Coast, West Coast, it really doesn't matter. Bacon is my favorite rapper. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Walking Drunk is in last place with $344.8 million. Team Game Night is in fifth place with $454.8 million. Team Ritual Misery is in fourth place thanks to Mission Impossible Fallout $77 million weekend, bringing their total to $582.6 million. Team The Vod Squad is in third place with $719 million. Team Have a Drink is in second place with $757.1 million. And lording above all in first place, it's Team Movie Party with $1 billion. $12.1 million. $12.1 million. That's your movie draft minute. All totals accurate as of August 1st, 2018. Um, it happened, dude. Yeah, the, the, the billion dollar uh the billion dollar season. One billion dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, congrats to Movie Party. Man, they are dominating. There is no way, no way at all that anyone is going to catch up with them. So the, the interesting thing that I saw when I was looking at this today, 
Movie parties clearly in first place. There's no way to get them. Have a drink and Vod Squad have a both have a valid shot at second and third respectively. Mm-hmm. If we get lucky, we still have a shot at third. We do. Um, Mission Impossible has to like open up a can of whoop ass over the next two weeks. Right, but it's getting great reviews, and it's even into the week is still because it only had like a fifty or sixty one million dollar weekend, but then it's been continuing to go. It's at eighty three now. Yeah. So if that's going to continue through the week, then this weekend we might actually get another good bump if we get another fifty million dollars out of that. Um, I mean that that puts us within within striking distance of a good couple weekends and a little trail mm-hmm. off uh, of third place. It's not likely, but it is possible, which is more than what I thought it was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in that realm of possibility, but also, I mean, have a drink does have another movie coming out. Um, I mean, it's crazy rich Asians, which I don't expect to make a lot of money. We're t- probably talking what less than 50 million, but yeah. still, even if it makes 30 million, dude, that's going to, that's going to put them out of reach of us. Yeah. Um, VOD squad, you know, their, their they're, movies are out. They're not going to make any more money. They're, they're going to make like, I don't know. It's going to trickle. Million, it's going to trickle. And that's it. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, mission impossible has got legs. I don't know, we're, dude. We're, we're only a hundred and 130 off. So if we have a good couple weekends with mission impossible, it is feasible for us to catch them. Yeah, we'll see. But Again, we're definitely not winning. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but it, it, it's almost as likely that game night might come up and take fourth away from us again. So um, that is possible. You have the Meg. If the yeah, Meg gets yeah, some yeah. Good, re- good reviews and some good buzz, and it's just a fun movie, it, like it looks like it's going to be a good popcorn movie. Yeah. Um, we'll see, man. Um, I don't know, but to add insult to injury, once we get to the end of this draft, and movie party has just spanked thoroughly spanked all of us they also have a final movie coming out yeah it's just salt in the wound yeah. uh, but yeah con- congrats to, to movie party i i don't think it's too early to call they have clearly won this thing yeah it's uh it's good on them uh we will have to adjust our strategy for next year <laughs> yes like <laughs> change out the team members <laughs> uh yeah um everything that we did this year is wrong so uh, it's it's not even like throw away the team members. It's like so, just move the team to a new city, give it a new name, have none of the same people, and throw away the playbook. So that's what we're gonna do next year. So I've got I've got a proposal because a few weeks ago, two three weeks ago, we had Richard Gunther on the show, and mm-hmm. he expressed interest in playing in the next draft. Mm-hmm. Well, he does not have a uh, like built in partner, like mm-hmm. another diamond club streamer that, that would pair with him automatically. I was thinking how fun would it be to have a movie draft team of Richard Gunther and Tay Allen? Hmm. It's something we're going to have to ask Tay hmm. when she comes on our show in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That that would be uh, that would be interesting. If nothing else, interesting. <laughs> hey, man, uh, it's Patreon week. Uh, we can't go at Patreon Day because we didn't have a show yesterday, and that was actually Patreon Day. But we have twenty what, twenty-two people that are providing us just a little bit of cash each month to make this thing awesome, and it's happening. And uh, wait, wait, uh, make it happen, and it's awesome. I I don't know how I screwed those up, but either way, they both apply. Uh, so thank you very much to all those who are providing us a little bit of kickback on the old Patreon. We do appreciate it very much. If you give a fuck uh, you, and you would like to give us a buck, cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash Patreon. Wait, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash ritualmisery. I'm, I'm dyslexic at the word level. That's what's going on right now. Uh, it's the glasses, man. The glasses are <laughs> making you read backwards. <laughs> so Patreon.com slash ritualmisery. Uh, if you give a fuck, give a buck and keep this show um, I was gonna say loud, live, live and independent. Yeah, that's but, what I was gonna say too. Uh, let's, let's keep this show uh, uh, subdued, uh, conscious, and available. Um, no, not yeah, the same another, ring? Good w- another good way to support us. If you're listening to the audio version of this show, you might not realize that we stream this show every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific over at Twitch.tv/slash Ritual Misery. Mm-hmm. If you are a Twitch Prime member 
which if you're an Amazon Prime member, you're automatically a Twitch Prime member. Mm. You get a free subscription every month. Go over to twitch.tv slash ritual misery and smash that subscribe button and give us some free money, some Jeff Bezos money right out of Jeff Bezos' pocket, not yours. Free money. Hey, uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Cabo Wabo who resubbed. Uh, Squid, who's resubbed recently, PM Realm, which is Patrick, uh, he just re- he just threw some bits at us, and um, it's not showing on the board, which is odd, but but uh, we appreciate it anyway. Cog Whistle is now following us on Twitch, so thank you very much Excellent. to Cog Whistle. Uh, yep. Welcome to the show. We love all of our supporters and followers and everything. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Amos, there's another button you should be pushing right about now. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kid's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. 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 Play with Thank you once again, Big Voice J, for providing the bumper for us. Um, always appreciated. Amos, I've got a game for you tonight that I am calling Wise or Well. Oh. Any Wise idea? Wise or Well. Any idea what the theme of this game might be? Now, it's wise as in like W-H-Y apostrophe S and Orwell, right? Like as in Orwellian drama? Uh, That would be awesome, and I wish I would have come up with that. Uh, But no, it is wise as in W-I-S-E, as in applying knowledge that you have in an effective manner, Mm. or... Good well, definition. as in, I hope you're doing well this evening. Okay. Well, or, um, or what's that, Lassie? What's that, girl? Timmy fell down the well again? Uh, I never understood how they understood the dog. <laughs> and I've probably seen every episode of Lassie. <laughs> and I still don't understand like how like it was just... And it, it's not that direct, but it's always like, you know, oh, what, what girl? There's There's something going on and I should follow you? Like, uh, uh, there's a fucking snake in the basement. Like, I don't like, <laughs> why are you running down the road? I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. it just... Oh man. So our, our dog river, she likes to be vocal and especially when she's encouraged. So mm. I do the lassie thing with her. Mm. So she's got to go out or she just wants, you know, you know, maybe her water bowl is empty or something like that. She just wants our attention for something. She'll do like a little. Roar, 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 roar. So I'll just like, keep the bit going. It's like, what's that girl? What? You know, and I'll make up some crap like, you know, uh, Lucas fell and broke his skull. What? What is that? You know, Isaac. And, and of course, Lu- and- Lucas, Isaac and Steph are all too young to remember Lassie. So because <laughs> yeah. it was in like its 15th year of reruns when we watched it back in yeah. like back in Nam. So, yeah, so when we were watching it on like local cable access. <laughs> yeah, it was PBS. We in- PBS would play it. <laughs> yes. it. It would play that Little House in the Prairie. Um uh, what were those other shows? Mr. Ed, uh, the famous Mr. Ed, Ed the uh, the Griffith Show, Andy Griffith Show. Yep, um, yep. Green Acres is the place for me. Sure, yeah, I've never been there. You don't remember Green Acres? I never watched it. Oh man, it was great. It was, uh, great. It was too close to Beverly Hillbillies. Like I already watched that. I didn't need to. Uh, that's know, another good show. Adam's Gilligan's Family. Island. Yep. At, yes, in the Monsters. Well, Adam, the Gill- Gilligan's Island was in color. That's too late. You got to keep going, keep it with the black and okay. white. You know, Larry Moe. True. And yeah. So that gets rid of. Yeah. So that gets rid of like I Dream of Genie yeah. and uh, later uh, seasons of Bewitched. Bewitched. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, because it did start out black and white, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it, they, they um, went they went color when they swapped dicks. Oh uh, yeah 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 the the old uh, dick swap. Yeah. That's right. What Dick Sargent was that the first one or is that the I, one? I don't know Dick York Dick York and Dick Sargent sure uh, you know your dicks better than I do <laughs> you're dude you're the one that brought up Dick uh, <laughs> Kent, Kent with the classic dicks uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get on this game man let's do this all right so the the title is wise or well to um, to rename it I would rename it. Samwise or Samwell. Oh, I like where you're going with this. Okay. I, I sense a theme. So I am going to read a quote, and it was uttered by one famous Sam or another. Mm. It's either going to be Samwise Gamgee, mm-hmm. the Hobbit from mm-hmm. the Lord of the Rings series, or 
it's going to be Samuel Tarley of a song of a song of ice and fire, aka Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Now, are these so, book only references, or are they book and or TV show or TV show only? Uh, man, I have thirty minutes to make these games. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure though that the the quotes translate to. So they, they should be fairly fairly common yes. either way. Okay. Yes. So it, if 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 it's not a direct quote from the books to the TV show or the books to the movies, it's going to be pretty damn close. Fair to enough. To something that said in the other. All right. Okay, so begin I the have, game. I have seven quotes. Oh. This way, we will have a clear winner no matter what between me and you. As uh, as is normal, you are playing against me. You get it right, you get a point. You get it wrong, I get a point. All okay. right. The first quote is, but I like girls just as much as you do. They might not like me as much. I've never been with one. You've probably had hundreds. Oh, that's totally Selma Tarly. That is correct, sir. Yep. Yeah, that's totally... That's like that's yeah. like a third day at the wall, <laughs> something like that. I'm pretty sure he said that to Sam. I mean, to Sam. Sam said it to Sam. Yeah, well, I'm pretty I sure mean, he said that to John. The mirrors Snow. were kind of kind of iffy back then. He could have been, you know, could have just thought he was talking to, through a porthole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's the only holy. Anyway, um, <laughs> see quote. <laughs> second quote is. <laughs> Snow's all right on a fine morning, but I like to be in bed when it's falling. Samwise Gamgee. That is Samwise, sir. Good job. Look, I got to win some of these damn games. Yeah, you are 100% so far. Two for two. All right, so the next one is, let him go, you filth. Let him go. You will not touch him again. Uh, Samwise Gamgee. Also correct. Good job. You know your Sam's. Uh, your Sam's better than you know your dicks. I know my Sam's like you know your dicks. <laughs> I'm quite familiar with mine. Mm. Uh, all right, fourth one. Them? Fourth one is I always wanted to be a wizard. Is that Samwell Tarly or Samwise Gamgee? That's actually a little tougher, but I'm still going to go with... Um, Oh, hmm. I always wanted to be a wizard. Hmm. Was it Sam or was it Sam? Well, because it's clearly something that Sam, uh, Samwise Gamgee would say, but it seems that the quote is, is more familiar to me, in which case it would have to be Samuel Tarley because... But then he, uh, the, the, I have to go with character knowledge versus world knowledge. Oh man, um, I'm gonna go. Fitz in the chat says that Amos better get every Game of Thrones one. <laughs> not that you have a Game of Thrones podcast or anything. No, not at all. Uh, let's talk about Thrones with. I'm Richard Gunther and Jenny Josephson. Right. Yeah. Um, amazing people. And on the iTunes and wherever else you, you receive I your podcast. I think it's just iTunes. I don't think it registered anywhere else because it just gets. Yeah. But a lot of them use so. iTunes as the, uh, yeah. it's kind of the index for the RSS feeds. Um, I would go, let me, let me say, let me go with Samwise Gamgee. You are saying that Samwise Gamgee said, I always wanted to be a wizard. Yeah, I know. It really sounds like something Samuel Tarley would say. However, I, it, I, it's almost got to be Samwell because I just can't see Gam, uh, Sam, uh, Gamwise saying that. <laughs> so, Gamwise Sam G. G. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go Samwell. I'll go Samwell. You're going Samwell instead yeah. of Samwise. Yeah. You got lucky by changing your answer before I could say because it was indeed Samuel Tarley that yeah, said. I can I can I just hear him it. saying that even though it doesn't fit in the universe. I I can just hear him saying it. It's like So this next quote contains another character's name 
And instead of saying that name, which would give it away, mm. I'm going to simply pause when the name so should gonna, be. You're going to replace the name with Dick. You know what? I will do that. I will say Dick in place of the name that would have been there. Well, welcome to uh, well, welcome to improv. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's some good in this world, Dick, and it's worth fighting for. There's some good in this world, Dick, and it's worth fighting for. Samwise Gamgee. That is indeed Samwise Gamgee. The yeah, quote was, there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. Yeah, because Samwise, or Sam Well would never say that. Yeah, Sam he's Carly kind of a downer. Would, yeah, he would, he'd be like, ah, do we have to fight? Can we, can we just give up? I'm, yeah, my my father used to say that I was weak and girl like, uh, but what were we talking about again? Yeah, that's kinda... <laughs> that's Samuel right there. I got it. I win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the sixth quote is, "I'm not cut out for this type of work." Samuel Tarley. That is, in fact, Samuel Tarley. Hmm. So the only question left is will Amos get a perfect seven out of seven score? Because right now you are a perfect six out of six. Barely. The next quote is, but I like girls just as much as you do. They, God damn it. I just realized that I already used this one. You did. So that is the finale. (laughs) And it turns out that you got a perfect six out of six. (laughs) How the hell did I copy and paste the same thing twice? Oh, uh, you, 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 you can't, you can't go up for a smoke in the middle of a seven question quiz, dude. <laughs> well, it helps when I make the quiz outside. Um, yeah. So, all right. So that was wise or well, you got a perfect six out of six. Nice. Uh, not a huge surprise for me because you do know Samuel Tarly pretty well. It, uh, puns, puns are always fun. <laughs> except when they're overdone yeah 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 uh yeah anyway <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to keep going oh no. man we only made it three in uh that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> oh boy there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's the rails a, we go there's a pun game that i like to play with the twins when we're driving well i like to play with anybody but usually the twins how, how are the ones it? um it's pretty punny uh, okay. Um, yeah. It, it's it's called a uh, uh, a thing walks into a bar, and the way that it works is this: you go a blank walks into a bar. The bartender says, "Hey, we don't serve your kind here," and then enter insert your pun. Uh, uh, what, what walked into a bar? <laughs> and, uh, that's that's just it. That's that's the thing that you have to name. Okay. So name, uh, name so something. an egg an egg walks into a bar, and the bartender uh, says. So an egg walks into a bar. Bartender says, "Hey, we don't serve your kind here." And the egg says, "I was just trying to hatch a plan." Oh. Uh, See, I'm not very good at the game, but it's fun. That's great. Okay, um, man. You, you, you're what supposed a, to a, continue the game. Like what? This no, is, we're not on a car ride in your car where you can dictate to me what sort of punny things I can and can't say. I will remember this. <laughs> 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 next, like, I mean, next time you're riding along in my car, me. I'm totally d- dictating you to, to play pun games. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's always, you know, the driver's choice for everything, right? Like the, the stereo volume, um, like if the driver farts, he has the opportunity to child lock the windows and turn on the heat. Uh, you know, like it's always driver's choice. So, yeah, um, I mean, you can you can hold me hostage with a bed. We says a piece of bread walks into a bar. The toaster bartender says we don't serve your kind here. The bread says, man, that really burns me up. Yeah, yeah, mm. not bad. Mm. Good job, bad weave. Can, can Good a, weave, bad can, weave, mediocre can, weave, whatever weave you are this evening. Kent's uh, Kent's afraid of improv. I'm afraid of puns. <laughs> I'm afraid of both. puns scare me unless I'm naming a podcast episode, because <laughs> that's kind of like the way you do it, right? Like, it's 
Uh, Fitzgib wants to know is brown and sticky a stick? Uh, it's a stick. Sticks are brown and sticky. They're stick like. Is stick like and sticky the same thing? Uh, it doesn't matter in the world of in, in, in the world of <laughs> kids jokes. Oh boy, what's orange and sounds like a carrot? Uh, 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 somebody chewing on a carrot. A parrot. A parrot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. All right. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Moving on. <laughs> let's let's just, uh, uh, let's delete this segment. I'm not oh, happy with oh this. Oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> So movie pass, you want to talk about movie pass? I want to talk about movie pass. Movie pass is going under. It's going to die. It's changed the whole way we watch movies. And now it's not going to survive long enough to see that way to fruition. That's what's going to happen. Dude. Yeah. I don't know. Did, did you ever buy into movie pass? I did not. Did, did you get one? Yeah. So I have one right as we went to buy into it is when shit started getting rumbly tumbly. And we're like, eh, let's hold off on this. So I, I've said this before. I bought in at the optimal time because not only was it after the price dropped to nine ninety nine, I bought it on the the like sale price when they had it for like seven ninety nine or something like that, mm -hmm. and like a one free month if you sign up right now or something like that. Some crazy, ridiculous deal. I got like a one year subscription for like seventy bucks or something. Yeah, which I've already like I've already seen like eight or nine movies with it, and it, I've already gotten my money's worth. Yep. Um, and the changes that have come out, um, up to this point have been like not applicable to me. So like rate hikes and, um, you know, uh, blackout movies and stuff like that have not affected me because they, they're like, okay, you're already locked in, you locked in before we're going to apply this. Right. So that was mostly applied to new subscribers or month to month subscribers. So this latest rash of, woes that uh that has befallen movie pass um i have received emails from them over the past few days and i have not yet read them hmm. uh, so you do you, do you know what's going on with them then uh i know that they are uh they're out of money and they like had to uh basically like get loans to pay off other loans in order to get the advanced cash just to pay for uh, like their current operation without shutting down. They blacked out movies like Mission Impossible was not a movie that they would let people see on it. Um, I've heard some of the buzz. I've read some of the articles. I surge listened to pricing. Code Killers this week. Yeah, surge yeah, pricing. Surge, they... surge pricing did not apply to me the, at least the last time that they, yeah. they talked about it. Uh, but like I said, I have not opened the emails that I received this week yet. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's changing the way we're doing business, kind of like Uber and Lyft did. Um, yep. Hopefully they survive just on principle, but uh, I don't see it. And since I didn't buy into it, I really don't have a, a, a dog in the fight. So no, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I Like I said, I've already got my money's worth out of it. I'm not mad about the situation at all because from go, I was like, there's no way this is sustainable because I'm – able to watch hundreds of movies for the price of like yeah. six or seven movies. Um, so it's already been worth it to me. I really hope that uh, like the last, you know, whatever, seven months of my subscription, I'll be able to watch the movies for free. But yeah, if not, it was a good run. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, dude, I, I do have something that I would like to share with the community. Uh, I've got some unfortunate news. Uh, but I do have some good news because there's a way for the community to help out. Mm. Uh, one of our beloved and dear friends in the Diamond Club community has lost a relative. Uh, Fitz, one of our, our good friends here mm -hmm. on RMP, his mother-in-law passed away just yesterday. Uh, earlier in the week, he created a GoFundMe to help the family out with medical expenses uh, from from the situation that arose, and unfortunately, she did not make it. So now the GoFundMe is still active. So instead of helping with medical costs, now the family needs some help with funeral expenses. Mm. So I would love it if people would 
go to yolo420.com slash help fits all lowercase all low all one word h-e-l-p-f-i-t-z uh, that's yellow420.com slash help fits. Please go to the page, look it over. If you want to give something, that would be awesome. Uh, but if you can do nothing else, please just share it, like, you know, tweet it out, share it on Facebook, uh, get the word out. Uh, they're great people. Uh, Fitz is our brother. We love him. And uh, it'd be great if you could help him out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't have anything to add to that because I don't. Yeah. So, dude, what else? What else we got going on? What's on the horizon? What do we got? Uh, up? Next week is going to be a very special episode of the Ritual Misery podcast. It's going to actually be a live episode of the Let's Talk About Thrones podcast with Jenny Josephson, Richard Gunther, myself, and you <gasps> as our first guest on the show. What? So, yeah, we will be discussing episodes 309 and 310, The Reigns of Castamir. And I don't remember the other one because uh, once you know it's the Reigns of Casimir, you know what's going on if you've watched the show. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be hell on me to try to negotiate that and make that all happen. But um, yeah, we're we're all excited to have you on, and uh, uh, it's we're gonna do that live because we we haven't done a live stream of that show. We couldn't do it on our normal Wednesday, but we we're all available on Thursday, and we fi- figured hey, that'd be a little fun thing to do. So if you've watched Game of Thrones, uh, co- cruise on by and watch us record that episode. It's usually about an hour long, give or take. So just like this show, uh, it'll be at the same time, same channel, everything else. And if you haven't watched Game of Thrones and you don't know what's going on, I would encourage you to skip this epi- next week's episode and instead go back and start listening to Let's Talk About Thrones Starring myself, uh, I say starring, it, it's hosted by myself, Richard Gunther, and of course, the amazing Jenny Josephson. And catch up and watch watch the show along with us. We are on track to have caught up to the current situation on the show right about the time when the new season should be coming out next year. Which, um, yeah, dude. It has been confirmed for uh, spring next year. Yeah, I, dude, I... I, I can't wait for the new season, which mm. is going to be the final season. But I also can't wait till next week. This is going to be great, dude. I love Game of Thrones. I love A Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, I, I love the balance that you guys have on this show. Uh, you, Amos, try, try to look at things from a like a technical perspective, uh, you know, production type of things. But you have seen all of the shows already. You have read uh, probably about half the books, I think. Uh, Richard, uh, well, actually, let's start with Jenny. Jenny has read all of the books, mm-hmm. uh, I believe, multiple times. She has seen the show multiple times. She's pretty well versed. Richard, on the other hand, is a newbie. Yep. He has never read any of the books, and this is his first watch through of the series. So you get to, which is actually my favorite aspect of this, getting to hear Richard's thoughts. And yeah. it's fantastic. And I, I, every time I listen to it, I always think, man, I would love to jump in this conversation right now because I got things to say. Oh man. Because I have read all of the books. I have seen all of the shows and it's, it's wonderful. And I, I, dude, I can't wait. And what a great couple of episodes for me to jump in on. Um, yep. the, the chat's talking about red wedding. Uh, yes, that is the, the episode Reigns Reigns of Castamere. Of Castamere. Um, Man, which, which has been alluded to, to a few times now already in the show. And yes. the podcast we were published up through the end of the second season. So this we've got about three. Yeah, we've got three in the hopper, four in the hopper. I think it's three in the hopper um, ready to go. And this will be, yeah, this is, is going to be a fun, fun episode to talk about, especially yeah. listening to Richard explain his confusion at the as to what the hell is actually going on. So I do have a question, though. Mm-hmm. Has Richard yet recorded himself watching the show? He has not. Damn it, Richard. I know. Damn it. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, that would be amazing, especially seeing his face during uh, the events of 309. Yes. Uh, can't wait. Uh, that's great, dude. So you do you do the show. Uh, it comes out, uh, what, 
not quite weekly. Um, I mean, it's, it's been weekly lately because I've been really pushing hard to, to get it published on time. And uh, yeah, so usually on Sunday night, so you'll have something to listen to Monday morning. And that is intentional. Yeah. That way when the when the final season begins, we'll be able to watch the show, then um, probably record the next day and get it pushed out as quickly as possible. So Yeah, and that show is called Let's Talk About Thrones. Check mm-hmm. it out wherever you get your podcasts. All right, man, that's about a, about a wrap for this week. Um, I did have, let's see if I can load it up real quick. Uh, we did have a voicemail this week. If oh. I can get it to, if I can get it to play. Oh, excellent. Uh, while you're, while you're bringing that up, I will say that, uh, Tay Allen is on deck to be our next guest on the ritual misery podcast. She took a trip this summer to Italy and she's eager to talk about her adventures on that trip. And, She's always a fun guest. We cannot wait to have her on. That's prob- probably in two weeks. Hmm. Um, date is not in stone, but we're looking probably two weeks from now, we will have Tay Allen on. So look forward to that one as well. Awesome. Um, okay, so here is the voicemail if we if it plays. We shall see. This is really good radio. So someone clearly butt dialed us. Um, (laughs) So I couldn't tell if you were fucking around trying to find the audio and get it to play still, or if I was in fact hearing the audio of the voicemail. No, that that, that was the voicemail. Uh, So we appreciate it. Give us a call. Uh, Leave us a voicemail, 567-698-7672. And uh, we will play it if you if you send us a voicemail, we will play it. Um, so five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. Tell us what you think about. Um, uh, tell us what tell us what your butt is thinking because that's apparently the thing now is what's going on in your pocket while you walk from wherever to wherever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell us anything. Make some shit up. Yeah. Uh, tell us a story. Uh, tell us what you think about the show. Tell just. Whatever, uh, just make animal noises. I don't care. Um, <laughs> that, that actually, you know, you know what? Tell us, tell us about your day at work because I I hate my job so much. I want to hear about your day at work uh, <laughs> through the eyes of a koala bear because all they do is grunt. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either way, no matter what it is, you want. <laughs> Send us right, a well, voicemail. If, if someone would, wants to would... send you a message, Kent, where can they do that? Twitter's the best place, of course. I am RM underscore Del Noche there. Hmm. I am at Ethan Kane. I said at, even though it's just Ethan Kane, but whatever. So Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E on the Twitter. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. And of course, we are. Uh, live every Thursday, well, pretty much every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv. I got to load my little stinger here because I am not prepared because that's how I do things. And uh, we would like to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. Um, and if you got ideas for the show, submit it on our, on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. For Kent, for me, for you, and for everyone listening out there, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y